Hey, Radians here. Today we are tackling an exciting challenge, developing internalization in a static Next.js application without external libraries. Next.js provides internationalized routing, but it relies on server-side rendering, requiring a server for the frontend. To host our apps statically without a server, we must devise a custom solution. While there are effective React internalization libraries like React i18 Next, for this project I chose to explore creating this functionality independently. In this video, we'll explore the intricacies of this task. Our goal is to enable a static Next.js app to support multiple languages and offer users a seamless way to switch between them. Although the app in question is in a private repository, all essential code snippets are provided in the blog post and the React Kit repository includes all reusable utilities and components we'll use. You can find all of these resources in the description. We are focusing on an app designed to assist individuals preparing for the Georgian citizenship exam. The final version is live at georgiancitizen.com. Unlike other projects I've worked on where internalization often takes a backseat, it's critical here. The app's primary audience are Russian speakers likely to search for this information in Russian. Before the app will support three languages, Georgian, English, and Russian. We'll generate each page in these languages, enhancing SEO as the site will appear in search result for non-English language queries. As mentioned, we are not using external libraries. Thus, we'll initially bypass complexities like pluralization. A language detection won't be automated. User will select their preferred language manually. However, since most users will likely arrive via Google search result, this shouldn't pose a significant issue. Approaching the translation challenge from a top-down perspective, the key component we need is a hook that supplies text in the correct language irrespective of what the language might be. We'll name this hook use copy, as it's responsible for providing the app's textual content. This hook's design combines type records, with each field being either a string or a function that returns a string with interpolated variable. This design provides developers with the benefits of autocomplete and type checking for their copy, significantly enhancing efficiency and code quality. Additionally, it generates a type here for any missing copy field during the app's build process, ensuring robustness and completeness. The architecture also eliminated the need for manual searches for copy variables. Texts that require variables are derived from functions with type arguments, thereby simplifying and streamlining the development workflow. Maintaining a copy type alone with its implementation for three different languages can be quite labor intensive. To streamline this process, we utilize code generation. Specifically, there is a sunk copy script located in the copy slash codegen directory of our application. This could automate the translation of our English source of truth into other languages and generate the corresponding copy implementations. For added convenience, we can incorporate a sunk copy command into our package JSON file. Each language is associated with a corresponding JSON file located in the copy source directory. In the sunk copy function, we initially retrieve the primary copy, which is in English, using the get copy source function. This function reads and parses a file into a JSON format. In cases where the file doesn't exist, it returns an empty object. When I need to handle a scenario without explicitly processing an error, I prefer to use an attempt function. This function attempts to execute a given function and returns a specified fallback value if an error occurs. To acquiring our initial text, we move forward with creating translations for other languages. Our application supported languages are listed in the language file, located in the languages package of our mon repo. This file includes languages in their native names and specify the primary countries associated with each language. These details are particularly useful for the language switcher feature in our app. To iterate over every language except English that doesn't need translation, we first remove it from the list using the without function which is a more comfortable version of the filter function. To create a translation for a new language, we begin with an existing JSON file and identify any missing keys. This is done by comparing every key from the English version and subtracting those already present in the target language file. Next, we extract the values associated with these missing keys and translate them using the translate text function. The translate text function resides within the languages package. You have the flexibility to choose 
any translation servers. Initially, I attempted using the ChatGPT API. Although it generally superior for translating popular languages, I encountered subpar results when translating from Georgian to English. Consequently, I switched to the Google Translate API for better accuracy. The function itself is straightforward, yet handling template variables requires additional steps. The challenge arises when the API inadvertently translates variables like category into other languages. To prevent this, we temporarily rename variables to var0, var1, and etc. before translation and revert them to their original names afterward. The extract template variables function, utilizing a regular expression, identifies all variables within a string. Subsequently, the without duplicates function eliminates any duplicates and the slice method removes the curly braces. The inject variables function plays a crucial role in reintegrating variables into the string. This function takes a string and a record of variable value pairs. It employs a regular expression to methodically replace each placeholder variable with its respective value. Translation of text in batches is necessary, and I selected 600 as the batch size based on its proximity to the API's limit during testing. The two batches function divides an array into smaller segments, each containing a specified number of elements. Setting up the Google Translate API can be somewhat cumbersome. It requires downloading a configuration JSON file and setting the Google application credentials environment variable with its file path. Additionally, the Google Translate project ID is necessary, which is retrieved using the getEnvar function. This function ensures typed access to environment variables and throws an error if they are not correctly set. Once the translation of the missing content is complete, we can proceed to assemble the final JSON file. For transforming a list of keys into an object, I prefer using a custom make record function. This approach offers a more user-friendly alternative to the standard reduce function. It takes an array of keys and a function that assigns a value to each key. Create and save a JSON file, I utilize the create JSON file helper function from our monitor post code package. This function employs format code for code formatting followed by create file for writing the formatted code to the file system. To format our code, we use Prettier. We first obtain the configuration from the monitor for the root and then apply the format function, selecting the appropriate parser based on the file extension. The match function serves as a functional alternative to the traditional switch statement. It accepts a value and a record of handlers, where each handler corresponds to a specific value. The function then executes and returns the result from the handler matching the provided value. Once we have an up-to-date JSON copy for each language, we can proceed with creating a robust copy implementation in TypeScript. Let's start by creating a copy type using the generate copy type function. This function takes a record of copy and generates a type with the appropriate fields. The to record type body function is responsible for converting a record into a type body by iterating over each key will pair, converting it into a string and wrapping it in a curly braces. To determine whether a variable is of string or function type, we first extract the variable and then check if it's empty. If the variable is empty, we return a string type. If it's not, we return a function type, listing all required variables as arguments. Ultimately, we invoke the createTS file function to generate a file with the specified type. With the copy type established, we can iterate over each language and implement the copy for every one of them. During this process, we utilize the toRecordTypeBody function to transform the record into a type body. Additionally, we import the inject variables function from the utils package, which is essential for handling template variables. In creating a TypeScript file, we include a comment at the top with the generated by field. This indicates that the file is auto-generated and should not be manually modified. The final piece of code we need to generate is the getCopy function tasked with returning the relevant copy according to the specified language. Initially, we import all copies, then create a record of copies for each language, and finally we export our helper function. To update the content, alternations are made in one of the JSON files, followed by executing the soon copy command to generate all necessary code. To connect the use copy hook with the generated copy, we'll utilize a standard React context, setting the copy type as its value. 
For straightforward providers managing a single value, I employed the getValueProvider setup function from ReactKit. This function facilitates the creation of both a provider and a corresponding hook for accessing the value. The process simply involves creating a context, defining props for the provider, which should include children and the value, and then returning a hook to access the value. The createContextHook function is tasked with generating a hook for accessing the value from the context. It takes two arguments, the contact itself and its name. The returning hook throws an error in cases where the context is not supplied. To facilitate server-side rendering of static pages with the correct language, each page should be wrapped with a copy provider, where the corresponding copy is passed as a value. We'll begin with the root page, a simple case where the language isn't indicated in the path name. In this instance, we default to the primary language of the application, which is English. To minimize code duplication, our application utilizes a page container component. This component encompasses providers and a layout common to all pages. Also modifying the HTML link attributes on individual pages using Next.js head component in static site generation apps isn't possible. We ensure to specify at least the content language meta tag. For more insight on meta tags in Next.js, refer to my other video. We select the copy corresponding to English and supply it to the copy provider. The language provider is responsible for monitoring the current language, which in our setup is primarily used for showcasing the selected language in the language selector. Moving to the existence of individual pages for each language, there are no language state alternations. Instead, users are redirected to the relevant page specific to the selected language. The use language hook demonstrates this concept. It retrieves the value from the language provider and returns it, along with a set language function. This function is tasked with updating the path name to reflect the new language and invoking the push function from Next.js use router hook. For data language in the path name, we first split it using slash, then we replace the element in the second position which represents the language with the new language. In cases where the language isn't already present in the path name, we modify the path name to start with the new language. Given that the root page is identical to the English page, we can repurpose the same component. However, we must include a canonical link on the root page directing to the English page. In our scenario, next public base URL is set to georgiancitizen.com. This step is crucial for avoiding duplicate content issues with search engines. It's important to note a limitation of approach. The inability to reuse the layout component across pages. This is due to the necessity of having the copy in the navigation, which leads to re-rendering when navigating between pages. Now let's examine the same home page, but under the link chart. In this scenario, the page is provided with a localized page props. In the get static path function, it's necessary to generate path for every language. On the other hand, the get static props function is responsible for returning the specified language in the props. It's important to know that this implementation is required for every page in our application. Additionally, when navigating between pages, the language must be included in the path name, so we can implement wrappers to abstract away the need to manually handle language in links. For instance, consider a custom link component that retrieves the language from the context and appends it to the path name provided in the props. Finally, let's examine the language selector, located in the Languages UI package. It's displayed in the top bar navigation of every page, represented by a country flag and a two-letter language abbreviation. Upon clicking, a popover menu appears, offering options for each language accompanied by their respective country flags. For those interested in the country flag component, I recommend checking this video. Selecting a language triggers a redirection to the corresponding page. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Become an effective 10x programmer with my productivity app at increaser.org.